Okay, ihr Lieben, wir haben äh, besondere Gäste, Kirtani und Anand, die spirituellen Leiter von Ananda Assisi. Und ähm, ich freue mich besonders darüber, dass wir das äh, als Abschluss unseres Festivals haben, weil die beiden, äh, es hatte einer gefragt, wie kommt der Spirit von Ananda in die Welt? Und die beiden sind äh, für mich zwei Menschen, die diesen ganzen Spirit auf unglaublich schöne Weise verkörpern. Ähm, Swami Kriyananda hat auch darüber gesprochen, was heißt das eigentlich, äh, Leiter zu sein von, äh, äh, von einem Zentrum oder so. Und er hat das, so wie ich das verstehe, definiert, dass diese Menschen zum einen sozusagen äh, die bestmöglichen Vorbilder sein sollen als Schüler des Meisters und sie sollen sein die ersten Diener der Gemeinschaft. Und das verkörpern die beiden so schön. Es gibt eine Geschichte mit Kirtani. Ähm, da war ich in Assisi und äh, wir hatten, glaube ich, davor, ich weiß nicht, ob wir davor überhaupt je miteinander gesprochen hatten. Und dann saß sie neben mir beim Essen und sagte, ah, wie lange seid ihr denn schon hier? Und ich habe gesagt, äh, ja, so vier, fünf Tage. Und dann sagt sie, oh, das ist aber schade, wir waren nicht hier und wir waren unterwegs und sonst hätten wir uns sehen können. Und das war das Gefühl einer tiefen Freundschaft, das Gefühl von Familie. Und das ist äh, etwas ganz Zentrales und Tiefes voneinander. Wenn ihr mal nach Assisi fahrt, werdet ihr das spüren können, dass das der Geist voneinander ist. Und deshalb freue ich mich sehr, dass wir die beiden hier haben und sie werden euch etwas erzählen über Communities. Wir hatten ja schon Ruby, die sozusagen aus einer sehr persönlichen Warte darüber gesprochen hat. Und äh, die beiden werden das nochmal auch in einem größeren Kontext äh, erzählen, was das äh, heißt, Communities in der heutigen Zeit als Modell für ein modernes Leben, was Meister darüber gesagt hat. Und äh, ich freue mich sehr darauf. Ich wollte nur ein bisschen auf Deutsch sagen, dass wir so, so froh sind, in, in diesem Moment mit alle, mit alle euch zusammen zu sein. Es ist etwas Ungewöhnliches, aber ich hoffe, dass es weitergeht und dass es eine Gewohnheit wird, dass diese Event zu, zu haben. So. <laughs> so, how do we begin? With, do you want me to speak first or do we want to go right into questions and answers? I wasn't quite clear. Um, I think Tobias is already translating. So what, what, what did he say? I think you can present. Okay. Okay, anyway, first I really am happy to be with you all here. And uh, I've been following this Yogananda Fest for a few days. And it is such a pleasure for us to see such participation. All of our friends are here. Um, there's a lot more Germans, of course, in this community, but um, just does my heart good to see uh, this interaction with you all up there, up there in Germany. So uh, it is our great pleasure and just so happy to see you all. So I wanted to start with something that uh, some of you asked Asha last night and <clears throat> it caused me to think about something because some of the questions were obviously about the insecurity that people are feeling today because of the situation around us. And Asha talked about, well, we, yes, it's, there is anxiety and some people are losing sleep and there's a lot different things going on in the world now, but She also said something uh, about, do we really want a complacent and an easy life? Because we don't necessarily grow 
when everything is perfect and everything is easy. And so I wanted to just touch on something that I hope will help you think about this. As many of you know, some years ago, five o'clock in the morning, police came, rounded us all up, uh, took, rested us, took us into uh, prison. And that was a shock for me. It was five in the morning, it was dark, I was sound asleep. The house is surrounded by police. They're ding, 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 ding on the doorbell. The lights are flashing. There's uh, lights, blue lights, uh, police lights in the parking lot. And I was woken up really in, in a shock. We, as the day progressed and we were fingerprinted and um, processed and finally incarcerated, that was an experience I had never had. And I, that night, finally at about two o'clock when all the other inmates and all the different cells they were asleep, the smoke had began to clear because everybody in prison smokes. The TVs were quiet, everything was quiet. And then I was able to look at what happened during the day and, my pro and the way I processed it. And I remember thinking, I don't understand why this happened. And I kept trying to meditate how is it possible that this happened and why did it happen? But I couldn't get an answer why it happened. And finally, I had to just process the fact that I wasn't going to get the answer why, at least in that moment. And so I had to just concentrate on the fact that I needed to relax and accept that it happened and then deal with how mentally I processed that. And once I gave it to master in that way, because I kept meditating, trying to ask master why, but finally I just accepted this is God's dream. Master said sometimes this is God's zoo, which I think we all might be feeling more of that reality right now than, but this is God's dream. And I needed just, just accept that I wasn't going to control it all. And I accepted it and then I began to laugh, even out loud. I think I woke my cellmate up because I laughed out loud at how, who could create such a scenario, so odd of a scenario from my life the day before to what had happened that day. It was just a complete change. But so I processed and thought, okay, I'm in my spine about this. I, I'm, I've got this. You know, I was thinking, I've got this. The next day, out in the courtyard where we all took air with all the rest of the inmates, as and you could just walk around and move a little bit, and and some of these other inmates would come up with uh, newspapers and show us that Ananda was the front page story, and they were just ter they were terrible headlines, terrible about how this is not nine leaders in Ananda in jail, they would steal from the guests who would come to their facilities and that they manipulated people and terrible, terrible stories. And um, I remember thinking, especially the third day that they brought me these newspapers and said the same thing. And I began to think, everything I dedicated my life to is being destroyed right before my eyes. Everything is, they're just, they're uh, defaming it and they're destroying it. And every day I meditated on the fact that I didn't do it for me. I haven't committed to this life for any other reason. It was, it was a choice, in fact. I made a good salary. I made a choice to come and live this way. And so I had to, at a certain point, reach the point where I wasn't attached to the fruits of my labor, that I had to just give it, give it to God, give it to master. But in fact, 
Exactly the opposite happened. We went through the process, finally at the end of 10 years to have the judge say there wasn't even a fact that substantiated the charges that were against us. So we, we went through this whole process. But the reason I'm telling you this story is that I had to work and confront the insecurity of not knowing what was in front of me or what the, my next step was. I had to just trust. But then all of a sudden, more people started arriving. We had people coming to our defense, writing these testimonials. People from all over the world were writing on behalf of Ananda Assisi and ab about what we're doing in, in, um, in support of what we're doing. And the numbers began to increase. And in, and in fact, the opposite happened. Rather than the whole work being destroyed, we saw an increase in guest numbers and an increase in um, our, our ability to do what we wanted to do. And really what we wanted to do here at Ananda was to spread the teachings of this path and of this line of gurus. So in this process of growth through the community, what I've seen is that when it challenges people and you see how they come shining out of their challenges by how they confront their challenges, that's the enthusiasm that I feel for living this, these, in these communities and building these communities. It isn't easy and it isn't always harmonious, but there is a reason why this works. And most of this community doesn't let us get away if we're not behaving somebody in this community is going to help us understand and not just bury it or not acknowledge it but there's also just this incredible support we might be feeling dry and uninspired by our meditation but you've got a support of people who are committed to inner growth and building a harmonious and an alternative lifestyle so there is a reason why we build these communities. And today, you can begin to see why this is so important. So I do want to speak frankly, because um, as Asha mentioned yesterday, there's no reason now to that we can't look at the world and see really what's happening. It's changing in ways that we can't imagine. This morning, I watched this, and maybe many of you saw it, this demonstration in Denmark. Huge amount of the population is protesting against the government and the government's um, protocols to shut down shops, to ask people to lock down or to isolate. They said the, the virus doesn't warrant it. But it's not the point. My point isn't whether there's a right or wrong to it. My point is that you're seeing div division, you're seeing polarity all over the world in society and in the governments or in, in most countries. And I want to address that, not, not so much the politics or the, the um, details of the division, but rather, what do you do with it? Right now, there's a you, I think it's easier for us to realize that when Master said, go together with like minded people and build these world brotherhood colonies, there's a reason why. And even though Ananda had 50 years of the ability to grow their community not out of necessity because the world was breaking apart, but we had 50 years to grow these communities in the atmosphere of developing a community where we did our, our the knot by, what we picked, by which we picked it up was simply to live for God. And that's what we wanted. We wanted to support each other in our inner search in our lives dedicated to God. 
But when you read most of what Master wrote about the need to grow these communities, he often said, take the best advice I can give you and you will be spared much grief. So there's a lot more that Master said and most of you know that Master and Swami spoke strongly about this, but we didn't grow that we've been at Ananda Sisi for 30 years. And even though we had our challenges like the attack from the government uh, or from the, pro from the local prosecutors, but all in all, we've also had this ability to create a community where we all could work on dedicating our lives to living for God. And it has been an absolutely rewarding and inspiring way to live, at least I speak for myself, for me to live my life. I worked a good job. I had a good job. I made a good salary. I had my own house, I had my own car. I could date pretty girls. I uh, had enough money to travel. I went to dinner shows. I, I lived the good life until this path began to speak to me. And I realized I wasn't, what was I, was I really accomplishing? What was I really accomplishing? And was I really happy? And so it slowly, slowly, and it doesn't mean that we're not inspired, that we don't do theater, that we don't go to theater, that we don't see concerts or that we don't appreciate music or that we don't enjoy pizza or that we, um, and if we love our, our wives or our husbands and our children and we are dedicated to building our schools and we have um, baptisms and we have marriages. We have everything a community has. We're not isolated in that way, but we're isolated in one way in that we are committed to maintaining a particular ambiance or a particular um, um, consciousness that supports each other in our spiritual development. So that's the groundwork, that's the foundation for what we're doing. Um, I, I do want to stress this fact that when Swami was asked the question years ago from somebody in Rome, they said, Swami, are you saying that we should just quit our jobs and go uh, and leave Rome. And he said, no, I understand it's not possible to do that. But what you can begin to think about is, is society going the way that I want, or is my life going, is my life and my job and my, with everything that I'm doing, am I going in the way that I want to, that would be the furthest expression of spiritual development or who I want to be. And he said, because if you're present, if your presence or your life in the city isn't supporting you in what, who you want to become or who you want to be, if it isn't, then you have a choice to be able to create what you want. And so that's why master said, go to the land or go to where you can create your community with like-minded people. Because there, as you see, we're living in countries, country after country that has become extremely polarized. So why not just go together with people of like-minded nature that supports what you're doing? Swami said to me once, and some of you know this story, but. I was very sensitive about other people's opinions. And he said, but Anand, everybody has an opinion and 80% of the time those opinions are wrong. So you can't continue to care so much about what other people do. When you know what you're doing is right, you, you make that happen. You have the choice and the freedom to make that happen. And so master's dream was building self-sustaining world brotherhood colonies. And now I see that term self-sustaining even more in light of the need that we need to be environmentally responsible. That's why he said self-sustaining is that we just don't continue to enter into consumerism where we 
where we use, use, use all these, these natural resources in order to try to support an economy based on things, where you have to buy things. And it isn't necessarily, the, the, it isn't necessary to enter in and continue to feed that, that process of consumerism, but it isn't, it also isn't easy to come out of it. And so that's where, again, a group of like-minded individuals, we're not self-sufficient here. We still rely a lot on the out, on out, outward goods and out, outward food sources, but we put four times the land under cultivation this year than we did uh, the year before. We are producing, we, we just made a conscious effort once we saw the world start to change, we made a conscious effort to change along with it, to just to, to be ready in case it continued to deteriorate, in case it became more difficult for us to have an economic base that supported what we're doing. So I wanna just wrap this up by saying, fear doesn't have a place, anxiety doesn't have a place. I've learned it personally. It, you don't, maybe, we may not know and be able to see what tomorrow brings. Certainly, my question about the future of this community was totally in question during the challenges of our incarceration, but I had faith. And when we have faith, when we live these teachings, when we are committed to higher Dharma, then it, we're, we're, then we, we're in that blessing. Asha touched on something last night that I want to close with. We think, is there a conspiracy or are we being controlled or the world's spinning out of my hands and I don't have the same income and I'm supposed to stay home and I, uh, world's not the same. But maybe it's intended that it comes apart. Maybe it wasn't, hasn't been right. And so maybe what's happening in the world is really guided by the masters as Yogananda said in the autobiography, Babaji and the masters are directing and guiding world events. They're not gonna let it go and just collapse. But it could be that, uh, in fact, um, how did uh, master say it? Um, there, God is performing an operation. And he said, um, America will become half as wealthy, but twice more spiritual. So he said he saw that America would lose its, its prosperity, its richness. Where the world has values that are placed way wrong on things, on uh, material accomplishment on financial success. But that's not what the masters teach. They teach, open up the windows of our consciousness, open up the doors of your heart, learn how to trust, learn how to receive the light, learn how to feel the bliss of God behind this creation. Dedicate your lives to the betterment of other human beings. Think about others, not yourself. All, all of the ego um, diminishing practices that we do in order to try to serve others and help others is what these communities can help support. So I will leave it there. I'll let Kirtani speak and certainly as we we're here for any and all the questions you might have. So again, just want to say it's a great pleasure to be here with you all. So I have a feeling that uh, you all probably could have a lot of questions about what Anand was just talking about. And uh, I will keep my part fairly short. I would like to talk more about how uh, the Ananda community in America, which was in existence for um, maybe 
15 to 20 years before I came to Europe. How does that translate to uh, a European reality? And um, how does the, the situation of Ananda Assisi, which is in Italy, uh, translate to what thoughts you all might have about community. So um, when I came to uh, Europe from Italy, from uh, America, it was after Swamiji had received various um, communications Communication wasn't as quick in those days. It wasn't an email that you read one day and answered the same day. It was letters and once in a while a phone call. And people in Europe were asking, after they may have had an experience at Ananda village, because of their connection with Yogananda and wanting to know about uh, a, a community dedicated to his teachings, so Swamiji had requests from people, couldn't we do an Ananda here? And it might have been in England or in Holland or in Germany or in Austria or in Italy. From all of those places, people had expressed interest in something like an Ananda community. And so Swamiji went to all of those countries and when he had finished his tour, he spoke with, uh, with those of us who had traveled with him and said that he felt, because Swamiji always will respond to people's energy, their output of energy, their wanting to help things happen. We, he certainly wasn't coming to Europe to convert people to either to master's teachings or to Ananda as a way of life. But for those who really expressed interest and had energy that wanted to move in that direction, he would always respond to that. And so this is what we feel is happening with what is this Yogananda Fest and uh, many people, not only in Germany, but in Holland and Spain and England and, and Italy, other places in Italy and Russia um, expressing interest in community. And so Swamiji decided at that moment in the history of Ananda that Italy was the place to begin. And I think it's because he felt the heart of the Italians uh, more than the mind and that they would be very open to what Yogananda had to offer. So in that first year, it was 1980, that a couple of us came and spent time in Rome and were uh, sharing the teachings, uh, mostly at that time in Italy. There was a lot of uh, interest in um, community and what we found is that although people were interested, they were not yet ready to make a commitment. And this is what I would like to talk about because it is not an easy thing to do. As Anand said, living in community is not easy. Um, however, it is exactly the aspects that aren't easy getting along with people, um, learning to let go of, of your own personal uh, opinions and your um, ideas about things in order to help a community start and to grow. And so this is, uh, when we came to Italy, we were first in a big villa in Northern Italy and it was big enough for the first year or so. And Swamiji encouraged us to start with a teaching retreat. However, this is not necessarily what he would say 
to others who were wanting to start something, a, a community. Swamiji, when he left Italy and left to those of us who were here, the, the work of Master and of Ananda, he said three things that were important. He said, you should meditate together, serve together and have fun together. And I think for those who are considering starting community, <clears throat> those are all very important things. We know how important it is to meditate together. We are devotees, some of you for many, many years. And you know how, what a difference meditation has made in your life and the changes that you've been able to make personally because of that. Um, so the meditation is something that's an important part for people who are trying to build community according to master's teachings. Uh, serving together, service is a part of community. One of the reasons that master talked about world brotherhood colonies and, and the importance they would have for the world as a, an alternative way of life was because of what can happen when people are living together that doesn't necessarily happen when you're living uh, on your own. And a lot of that comes from the service that is possible when you are a community of more than three or four people. You, know, you are serving each other and you may also be serving uh, the, the work in terms of giving the teachings to others. And having fun together was an interesting thing because I think none of us thought that that would be in the top three things that Swamiji would encourage us to do. But it's very important. It's important that we not take ourselves too seriously, that we not take the spiritual path so seriously that we forget that it also should be fun. Uh, many of you would have heard Swamiji say that um, we're here, as Master said, we're here to uh, entertain and to be entertained. And that's, that's fun. You know, it's not, uh, it's not a burden on our shoulders to take that on. So all of those things are things that as, as a group of people here in Italy, there are three or four serious groups of uh, meditation groups that are now uh, on land or working with land that they have or looking for land. And um, they know that these things we just talked about are a very important part of beginning a community. Swamiji said um, years ago, there was a, the, the man who designed our temple of light was with a group of devotees of Sai Baba that very seriously wanted to build community and live in community. And they asked, they invited Swamiji to come up to Switzerland and to see what the land and to talk about what would be helpful for them to know about starting community. And it was interesting what he said to them, which we share with everyone who talks about wanting to start community. Community is not the buildings, the structures, um, the businesses. Uh, all of those can be part of any particular community. But he said the community is the people. And that's what you have to start with. You have to begin by building the connections and the, the bonds and the friendship among the people that are going to be living in the community. And it's why he would, he would often not encourage people, first of all, to, to build the actual physical aspects of community. He told us as Ananda in Como and then as Ananda in Assisi, that we were to serve master's work and bring master's light and his teaching to everyone who came. 
And so he advised us to start with our meditation retreat, with our guest retreat. Probably he did also realize that if we didn't have some way to have an income coming in, we would have a really hard time getting started. Um, also because uh, there were not many Italians who were part of that original group. And so it wasn't like people who had a job in Italy and could work at their job and, and help to create a financial base. So there are many things that are a part of having a strong community, but the most important thing is the people that you are with, um, being, being aware of people's magnetism that want to be part of the community, have people explain to you why they want to be part of a, a spiritual community, um, and have them uh, give, give them clarity about what you are thinking about community. And then try to be together as much as possible, Medi meditating together, studying the teachings together. And before I run out of time for talking about it, um, let me just mention the two books that are very, very helpful if you're talking about um, starting a community. One is the Cities of Light. This is the one where Swamiji talks, starts out by saying, imagine a place where and then he's, he, he, he puts into words all of your dreams about what your community could be like. And um, the other one is Hope for a Better World. I don't know if either of these books is translated into German, but many, yeah. but many of you um, are, are able to understand and to read English. And perhaps someone will feel inspired to translate this for the communities movement in the future in Germany. Hope for a better world, uh, the small communities solution. And just very briefly, I want to talk about why small communities would be a solution for, for the future and especially for our future that we are looking at right now. Um, because there are many, many things of which Anand has been talking about and questions that Asha answered yesterday uh, about what is happening in the world right now. And for many of these situations, being able to live in a smaller group of people from five to 25 people, we consider ourselves still a small community. Um, and we're already at maybe 120 or a few more. But we're in an area where the, the community can expand because people can rent places or buy land or be able to um, join us without actually having to live on our property. And um, so having a place where, which is out of the cities. Ananda has city communities in America. And right now, I think those communities are really vital for the people who are living in cities in America with the, the COVID and all of that. But Swami advised getting out of the cities and finding land and um, you don't have to pick up and move there immediately, but to start developing a place where people can live, where people can come. Um, housing. I think there's just one other point that I would really like to make about what that life may be like. Um, I think it's important right now in these times that we all be thinking about how we can simplify our lives. Because um, if we don't make a decision to do that ourselves, the decision may be taken away from us and we will have to learn to live more simply just because Right now, we can see the effect that the, um, this crisis of the virus is having on economies all over the world. Um, people are living, having to live with less money and less things, and some people are having to live without a home. Um, it's, it's not an easy time 
if we are very attached to our um, life as it currently is, and this is the point that Asha was making yesterday, we may be looking at uh, financial difficulties, housing difficulties, um, even food difficulties. And so we want to simplify our lives by uh, becoming as self-sufficient as we possibly can. And so if it's possible to find land, if it's possible to begin a, a garden, perhaps that's something you've already done. I know that some of you already have that. Uh, because if you have your own source of food, you won't have to worry about having to buy food. Um, if you have your own source of energy, then you won't have to be worried about paying for the electric bill or the gas bill. Um, all of those things could very well be part of our future. And the idea of living in a more simple way uh, Master talked about that when he talked about World Brotherhood colonies. Come together with like-minded people and uh, discover that having a simple life with high ideals is the greatest way to true happiness. And so it's not a matter of uh, what, what we may be facing in our lives is going to destroy us or is going to make life just impossible. Um, it actually is our opportunity, perhaps, to do exactly what Master has been saying will lead us to the greatest happiness. So let's see if there are questions. Ja, meine Frage ist, was wären die ersten Schritte, um eine Community oh, zu starten? Uh, Kirtani, du hast schon einige uh, Sachen dazu gesagt. Also es braucht auf jeden Fall eine Gruppe von Leuten, die das gemeinsam machen möchten, die eine gewisse Übereinstimmung haben. Aber also welche grundsätzlichen Ideen oder von der Intention her, also welche Übereinkünfte und Vereinbarungen würde es brauchen, also als, als Baseline? Und äh, ja, weil bei Ananda war ja Swamiji da, der war ja so eine anerkannte Autorität, die das vorgegeben hat. Weil wenn nicht eine Person da ist, so als Zugpferd, wie kann das funktionieren? Ich kenne viele spirituelle Leute, die über Community Building nachdenken und alle haben so ein starkes Ego, dass jeder irgendwie sein eigenes Ding macht. Do you want to start? Okay. I'll start with that and uh, can, if you found you can pick it up. Um, it's, can you hear me okay? Didn't see any response. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, okay. Um, so it's true that if you're a group that's bigger than four to seven people, and even if you are a group of a small group, leadership is um, going to be the point where the potential for the uh, most amount of um, trouble difficulties. and difficulty <laughs> exists because you have to, you have to have a few people who accept the responsibility to, um, to really give it direction. And we've always had Ananda, uh, I'll just give you a couple of examples. Swami said he liked being here because at Ananda CC, we always sort of governed, if you will, by a planner's group. And so it never was really like this, which was top down, it was like this, where we tried from sort of the center to uh, delegate responsibility, de delegate authority, and not have it be about the leadership, but about, but have it be about people accepting and taking responsibility. And, and it's a huge success here because you see many, many people picking up the parts, their part of building this community with enthusiasm, 
with dedication, with skill and talent. They, they really a lot of people who have um, made Ananda what it is today. And it's not the leadership, but you will need in certain instances, the, the person who, or the people who will accept that like in a particular situation of uh, indecision that you trust that these people, that we can give these people the, the, uh, the responsibility to make the final decision. But it's not so much about decisions, it's about can there be a core of people who can just help maintain a, the particular ambiance and the particular um, consciousness you want to permeate the community without being heavy handed about it. For example, we want to establish a spiritual environment, but like I said, you don't want that. First of all, you don't want the leadership uh, going around and swatting people with sticks if they're misbehaving or if they're not doing it to the way that we think it should be. Because part of Swami's talent was to accept people in these communities at whatever level they were at. And that on, not only was Swami's talent, it is also a difficulty of the communities is that you have to develop patience, understanding, tolerance of different people's right to be where they're at on the spiritual path. And so it does take tolerance. In fact, Jyotish's um, counsel to me once Kirtani and I were here and as Jai Dave said today, at once Ram and Dhyana were gone and once Prahlad gone, then it was Anand and Kirtani. And one of the things Jyotish said was, uh, err on the side of tolerance. Rather than thinking that's not right and I'm gonna go in and attack it because that person needs to understand that, that, that how they're behaving or the attitude they have isn't right. You just allow an organic growth in people as much as you can allow it without destroying the, the ambiance of the community. So quite honestly, um, that, that cooperation with whatever core group there is, is going to be fundamental in beginning. And once you have an agreement um, or a harmony amongst a group of people, like-minded people, like Master said, and then he said very strongly, I heard the, the recording, these, this, uh, these world brotherhood co colonies cannot happen without harmony and without brotherhood. And we've realized in these communities, the most difficult thing is to get over your own need to see it the way you see it and allow other people the ability to have their opinion to be heard and to, um, to, to be tolerant. And this, of course, is exactly why communities are such a growth producing way of life. We can all live in the world uh, individually in our own homes, in our jobs, live our lives and never have to really come up against the things in ourselves that absolutely have to change if we're going to find God. And if that's our goal in life, that's why Master even said, this way of living will spread like wildfire. I never could understand how that could be possible because Ananda for a while was the only community and then Ananda became several communities and then other people, other people are doing community, but it's the, one, it's the internet and the ideas just are instantly out there on the internet. But the other thing is that when people become dissatisfied with the way their life is going, they're looking for something that will help them to change. They know they want to change themselves. They're not just looking to change everybody else. And it's, 
when you come into community, one of the things that you really have to look for is whether people are coming, are coming together because they have their own idea and they want their idea to prevail and everyone else has to change according to their idea. That doesn't work unless you're the person who finds the land, finances the whole thing, and you simply make yourself the dictator of that community. <laughs> um, we, we all have, uh, even the people who come here to Ananda have many, many different motivations and reasons for coming, but a few things are just understood. And that's something you mentioned that you know a lot of spiritual people, a lot of people who are living a spiritual life. Um, to come together to live a spiritual life, um, there has to be that understanding that um, you're going to work on yourselves and that people have, have time and opportunity to do that. Um, leadership is important, but it can be uh, two people, it can be three people, it can be, you know, in our case, we were spiritual directors, but we had a group of, that started out with seven of us, and we always talked everything out. We didn't vote, we just, one of the things that, that happens at Ananda when there's a meeting where decisions need to be made is that everybody knows they can speak up, it's important listening to everyone is important when you're talking about getting coming into community. But when it came to making decisions, um, everyone listened, gave their own thoughts, and then there was a discussion about, and sometimes it was just clear, you know, no one was attached to their own idea Everyone was listening for what was the right thing. And often it was clear and everybody said, yes, that's what we should do. Sometimes it wasn't. Sometimes it isn't clear right away. And so you don't make the decision in that moment unless it really has to be made in that moment. And you meditate on it. And what everybody's looking for is the answer to this question. What is trying to happen here? And the what is trying to happen comes from what what God wants us to do, what the guru wants us to do, what the, what the teachings are, are telling us is the right thing to do. It comes from Dharma, you know, the right thing to do. And again, it, that's not easy, but if you, if you decide who's going to come together in this community by an understanding of yes, this, this is what we want to do. We don't want to just uh, have our own way. Then you can, you can work things out. And that is community. You know, it can be two people starting out, trying to clarify, you know, what is it that we want in community? And a third person comes in and you talk about it and you share what you've felt is, is right about a spiritual community and perhaps you adapt it when the third person comes in, but you don't, um, don't let go of your basic principles. So Swami talks a lot about crystal clarity. In fact, the, the book uh, Cities of Light, I think is based on his, his thought of having crystal clarity about what it is that you want to do with your own life, with your community, with your meditation group, and that helps you to make the decisions that you need to make. If I could just make a, one other comment too. Swami was very good about one thing that he saw in America when communities were being born and were happening. He saw something that we still respect today. It's a very practical thing, but everybody's own finances is their business and so they are the, um, what would you say, the, they're in control of that themselves. So what happened in America in the early days when communities and communes 
tried to happen was that there was this insistence or this tendency or this requirement to have everybody put all everything they had into a central good and then the community would split that up but as you said there are a lot of spiritual people and they all have their egos you're looking at two of them that are sitting here with their egos and what happened uh that swami clearly saw was that if the leadership wasn't right it was too easy for the person who controlled that money to get into a power trip and people would feel it, they did they weren't heard or their part of what they contributed wasn't wisely distributed or spent and it caused a lot of disharmony so you're responsible for your own finances but if when you come together it's a very important to try to develop income producing things that allow you to begin to build the community on a community level and those of you who have individual finances can contribute as you can or as you see fit but it's also important that there is that talent there is that um, cooperation to develop community owned business or if not businesses that make money at least community run gardens community the, what master really saw if there was a difficult time he said use the least amount of money possible and try to exchange everything you can grow chickens uh to for a few eggs try to sew your own clothes he said use the cross currents of talent that everybody that a, a mix of people have and try to be as self-sufficient as you can with that combination of talents and then use the outside world as little as you need to and i'm not talking about being to exclude yourself from the outside world i'm only talking about what you what can be accomplished by trying to develop a a local economy or an internal in economy in your community is there another question meine Frage an Anand und Kirtani ist ähm, ein bisschen äh, oder, oder äh, schließt so ein bisschen an die Frage an oder an die Erklärung, die Anand so ein bisschen gerade gegeben hat. Und zwar geht es nochmal um die finanzielle Ausstattung einer solchen Community. Also insbesondere die Frage, ob eine Community wie in Ananda Assisi, wo eben anders als, so wie ich es verstehe, in Kalifornien nicht jeder finanziell für sich selbst verantwortlich ist, sondern es eben auch Menschen gibt, die sozusagen in der Community auch ein gewisses ähm, Gehalt für ihren Beitrag sozusagen ähm, erhalten, ob ähm, eine Community wie Nananda Assisi möglich wäre, wenn ähm, es keine von außen finanzielle Unterstützung geben würde, beziehungsweise ähm, ob es immer einer Unterstützung von außen bedürfte, damit überhaupt eine solche Community auch existieren kann so in der Größe und mit den ähm, Vorhaben, die sie auch hat, neuer Tempel, vielleicht irgendwann ein Altenheim für ältere Menschen. Danke. Thank you. Ah, okay. Okay. Tobias, it's nice to see you. <laughs> and um, in the beginning especially it's almost mandatory it's almost impossible not to have outside income to help you grow and obviously what we would like to accomplish il is to realize yogananda's dream of building self-sustaining world brotherhood colonies if it was self-sustaining, that would mean that we are producing our own power. We're producing enough food to feed everybody, that we um, have the means and the industry and the, the cottage industries, you might say, to produce our own clothes or to produce the things that we need. So financially, it would be nice to actually realize the goal of self-sustainability. In Ananda's case, that never means that we would want to cut ourselves off from the outside world because otherwise we would cut ourselves off from you all. We, uh, we 
have made so many friends and bonds of friendship over the years by being open to building a spiritual, a worldwide spiritual family. And so I, that's part of what is so rewarding to me about building these communities is you all, these friendships and these connections that you build and you see these wonderful hearts and these uh, very uh, intelligent and skillful and talented people who also want something that's deeper in their lives, that they want to find the truth in their lives. And so it's not about negating the world. However, because the financial world is becoming more mm, unstable, the need for us to work toward realizing our goal of self-sustainability is even greater in our opinion. And in fact, amazingly enough, and I think this is again, um, our attunement to God and the gurus and divine mother and, but people have stepped up in this time to help us realize um, accumulate, uh, accumulatories, uh, what's the word in English, the, the battery packs that are needed in order to uh, harness and store the energy from our solar panels. Um, the wells that we need to uh, for us to have our own water systems, the food and the agriculture equipment it takes to become more self-sufficient on the farming level. People, the, the people have just stepped up in so many ways to help us. And so, for again, I want to emphasize this. For years, we dedicated our energies of this community toward serving you all or serving guests and spreading the teachings. And we neglected really this part of building community. We're still renting houses that we've rented for 30 years. We, uh, we have, of course, bought property and we do own agricultural land and we do own um, the Il Refugio and the, and the Brenda Bond house. But essentially, we didn't, we didn't neglect it, but we didn't put our emphasis on community building. But now, incredibly, when the time comes where we had to shutter our guest facilities, where we had to close our businesses, people have stepped up. And now we are realizing the community aspect. So if we live in tune with the flow, with the harmony of dharma and right, righteousness, financially and materially and spiritually and socially, things, things sustain us. And so I, it's, it, it's worth emphasizing that a dharmic life supports us in our finances. And, but just to emphasize that again, Tobias, we don't <laughs> want to ever close ourselves off but we do want to maintain and build a particular spiritual ambiance. But we, we, we here, I think I speak for everybody, we love technology and uh, we love nice homes and we love fresh grown vegetables. And uh, we, we really love everything we're doing to build this life. Uh, so it's not about exclusion. It's only about trying to maintain a particular atmosphere. That's why we don't drink and do drugs is because that would dilute somewhat what we're what we are maybe not even somewhat but a lot of what we're trying to accomplish here. So I hope that answers your question. Tobias. And it's very nice to see you. <laughs> I also think it's very important to realize that um, Anand mentioned this, but the people <clears throat> that come together um, if you have people who are innovative, pe innovative people who uh, are willing to learn, um, <clears throat> it's amazing a community can start with no one, for instance, who knows how to work with animals. And somebody decides, I'm just going to learn about working with cows I'm gonna, so we can have milk. I'm going to learn about working with goats. So, or uh, to raise chickens. So somebody decides that this is something they're going to focus on and it helps to build the community and build 
an income in that way. You can do a, a farm, a, a garden that is much larger than you need in order to go to the, the farmer's market and sell your vegetables. Um, there, are, there are many ways that the talents of your people and the, the opportunities that come up for people to learn new things can be what ends up uh, actually supporting the community for a long time. In the beginning, uh, this community did not have anything other than the, um, the retreat. However, uh, Drupada, when he was here, and Anand, and as, as, as uh, when Drupada left, emphasized the importance of our cushions that we were making. And we're still, we still have cushions that we're selling and yoga mats and things that um, were part of our life, but also something that we could make. Uh, Maya Devi and Shivani and myself and others were, were sewing and, and, and stuffing cushions. And uh, in the beginning, you, you need to uh, widen your horizons about what can support the people that are that are trying to start the community because there's a you know the services in particular a, a school that maybe starts because you have a few children in your own community but someone who applies themselves by learning and studying education for life can start to create another income source for the community there are many options and that's something that uh, is a part of the learning of teaching people how to start communities and create communities that we will be doing um, <clears throat> is looking at all the many ways that that people in community can create something that will support not just themselves but but the whole community or part of the community. I just want to add briefly that um, I'm going to tell you a little story uh, that illustrates the need for us to come into these communities, not necessarily thinking that we need to see the end result, but being open to a flow of it, sort of the development that the ability that it will develop organically. You know, Jaya Dave came here and his father wasn't happy. And his father and I had a few discussions when uh, Jaya Dave was new here. And his father would come and one time he said, look, I would like to give my son some uh, inheritance, but I don't want him just to turn around and give it to Ananda. And I said, uh, well, I understand that. And it would help Ananda actually if Jai Dave were to take his inheritance and do something that actually allowed him an income base. It, it, it takes a little bit of the weight off of the Ananda community having to support each of our members individually, I mean, uh, as a community, but rather they can take responsibility individually. And uh, he said, oh, that, so I said, if Jai Dave always had this desire to build little seclusion pods and, uh, and support people who could come and do seclusions. And I said, if, if that's what he wants to do or whatever uh, in that way, that works for us. And there's no, there's no, part of us that wants Jai Dave's inheritance to come into the community that we're building, unless there are donations or part, something that he th thinks he wants to help to, to realize. But so the father said, so, he's, so Rudolph said, oh, that works for you. And I said, yeah, that's the way we would like to see it. And, and then I, he said, well, I want to be honest with you. I didn't like it when Jai Dave came because he threw away college, he threw away uh, the corporate ladder, if you will, he, he had a future, he could have come up. And he said, but I see that he's happy. And then I said, but Rudolph, there's another thing. Look at what he's done here. He's learned a new language. He learned to play guitar. He's comfortable speaking in, in front of 20 or 300 people. He has developed a whole set of skills that he didn't have when he arrived here. So it's not true that somehow he missed out. And then Rudolph said the most beautiful thing. He said, yes, and above all, I see that he's happy. 
And so um, that's important that the community be the kind of place where even your parents wouldn't mind you being there. <laughs> so so I, I hope that helps. I realize we're about out of time. I don't know actually if we have a uh, more time for. Eine simple Frage. Wir hatten die Idee einer Familienwoche in Deutschland. Würde es möglich sein, voneinander dafür Lehrer nach Deutschland zu gehen? Actually, the family week is a is a wonderful idea for drawing families who might be interested. Um, <clears throat> it's our been, mission. We we've <laughs> been asked a lot in uh, in the forty years that we've been here uh, to come uh, to different places to help people to um, to reach out and to give teachings and to start things wherever we can and wherever we could we've gone you know so teachers from ananda have gone to many of the Euro european countries to to do this to help with this education for life is a, a wonderful thing to offer and the teachings are uh, of course, from Yogananda, and so they're very in line. They're, they're wonderful for children, for families, for parents, for all adults. So it's something that we would want to be able to do, whether we have the, the staff and the wherewithal to be able to do that. Um, I think uh, Joanna or someone can talk with, um, with both Kabir and um, Prim Jyoti here and find out with the COVID travel already is, is uh, um, travel would be a problem. Doing it online, we possibly can, can do much more. And it's something that we would love to be able to do. So um, ask. <laughs> Could I close with just a, a comment that I'd like to share with you all? It's really, um, dear to my heart to see you all, to see you all in Germany in this way. And so I would like to just um, propose a particular scenario. It's, there's every possibility that there could be a world event in the world that happens, a global event that happens throughout the world that changes our lives even more than what we've seen so far. And the secret or the, the way the what you all have to confront such a situation, if there were one, is that you have this network. So I would encourage everybody I see on this screen and even those who I don't see on the screen, but who, whose names I see on the screen, I would encourage you to continue to magnetize and to develop your friendships and your affiliation so that should there be something, you all have a network already. Um, I still think it's a nice idea if any one of you has a farm or an uncle who has a farm or if you have a place out in the country where if you need it to all go and begin and I know people don't like to hear this kind of thing, and I'm not saying that there is a global event. Um, many saints have forecasted and do say that there would, there will be, but it's not important. More important is the network that you have, the friendship you have, 
and the attunement to this path that you have. And so my hope is that from the community that I see within you, all of you right now, that you use that as a go-to and your, your brotherhood and your harmony and your friendship with each other, make that um, a part of what you can use if, if uh, the situation arises and you need to. So develop that network. It's wonderful to see you all. And um, I pray really that you really develop more this um, friendship and this interaction with each other. And thank you for inviting us. Yeah, it's been our pleasure. God bless you all. Thank you.